Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be adding support for textures with transparency. So transparency can be a pretty annoying thing to implement in OpenGL. For example, imagine that we're in the process of rendering this scene here. So we've rendered the terrain and a house object and some other scenery and now we render the next object which is a glass that has transparency. OpenGL sees that the glass has some transparency and so it calculates the colour of the rendered glass as a mixture of the glass's colour and the colour of everything behind the glass, depending on how transparent the glass is. So that's all well and good, but if we keep rendering the scene, any objects rendered behind the glass are not going to appear through the transparent glass. The glass has already been rendered and its colour has already been calculated. Rendering other objects in the scene is not going to ever change or update the colour of the glass and so the illusion of transparency is broken. So when rendering objects with transparency like this you have to sort all of the transparent objects so that you render the scene from furthest to nearest. But not only that, you also have to sort all of the individual triangles of a transparent object so that they render from back to front, otherwise you'll have the same problem. All in all, transparency is not very fun to work with. However, in some special cases like the ones that we're going to be dealing with this week, there is an easier way to implement transparency. That is when an object has a texture that is either completely transparent or completely opaque at any point like for this grass or for this fern. There are no half transparent bits, the texture is either there or it isn't. This is much easier for us because we can just tell OpenGL to not render the transparent bits at all, meaning that none of the previous problems that I mentioned could ever occur. This way is quick and easy but it's not always great for performance so we'll be looking at alternatives in future tutorials. So let's have a look at exactly what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. If you try to render textures with transparency at the moment in our game, this happens. So what we're going to be doing today is telling OpenGL not to render these black transparent sections of the textures at all. So let's go into the normal fragment shader and we're going to add a test here to see what the alpha value of the texture is. So first we need to get the texture color and we've actually got code for that already down there but we need to separate it and store it in this new vec4 called texture color which we can then substitute in there and now we need to test the alpha value of this textures color so we do if texture color dot a is less than 0 0.5 then it's a transparent part of the texture so we discard it and if we run that you can see that that is now mostly working but some parts of the model are not visible and that's because of the back face culling that we implemented last week which means that some sides of the transparent models aren't visible which is obviously not good. So we need to implement a way to turn off backface culling whenever we're rendering an object with transparency. So in the model texture class we need to add a boolean attribute to determine whether the model texture has transparency. So let's create a boolean called has transparency and we'll set that as default to false and now let's just add some getters and setters for that has transparency boolean. And now let's go into the master renderer and we need to create a method to enable backface culling and also a method that can disable backface culling. So let's create a public static method to enable culling and we've already got the code for that up here so we can copy that and put that in. And then we need another method to disable culling, which we can call whenever, whenever we're about to render a model with transparency. And to disable backface culling we call gl11.glDisable and then we put in gl11.glCulface and we can actually call that method there instead of that code. So now if we go into the entity renderer, we want to disable culling whenever we're rendering a texture with transparency. So in the prepare texture model bit, if the texture does have transparency, then we call that master renderer dot disable culling method. And when we unbind a textured model, just to be sure, we're always going to enable uh, culling again so that it's definitely enabled for the next model. 
So let's go into the main game loop and we need to set that has transparency boolean in the textures that we want to have transparency. So the grass, I'm going to set the texture, uh, I'm going to get the texture and set it to have transparency because we know that the grass texture has transparency and the same for the fern transparent uh, texture. And if you have a look at that, uh, it has now worked. You can see that everything is being rendered properly, the fern you can see all sides of the leaves. So it's all rendering nicely now, except for this lighting on the grass here, because the grass is simply made up of two quads, and the normals on these two quads are facing in completely different directions to each other, and so the lighting on them is going to be very different. So we're going to have to fake the lighting on objects like this by setting all of the normals to point upwards so that the lighting is more constant over the whole object. So let's go into the model texture uh, class again and we're going to add another option and this option is going to allow some textures to be rendered using this fake lighting that I was talking about. So we're going to set that to false as default uh, and we also are going to add a getter and setter for this boolean. Now let's go into the shaders, uh, let's go to the vertex shader, the normal vertex shader, not the terrain vertex shader and we're going to add a uniform a uh, float called use fake lighting and this is going to indicate whether we should or shouldn't use fake lighting. It, the value of this will be 0 if we shouldn't use fake lighting and it will be 1 if we should use fake lighting. Now we're just going to create a new vec3 called actual normal and we're just going to set that to normal uh, and we'll put that in there so at, at the moment everything is exactly the same but then we're going to test if we should use fake lighting. So let's check if that's greater than 0 0.5, in which case we should use fake lighting. And then we're going to set this normal that we're now going to use for the lighting calculations. We're going to set that to 0, 1, 0, which is going to be pointing directly up, directly up the y axis, which is pointing upwards. And that will do that for all of the vertices in the model that we want to have fake lighting. So now in the static shader we need to do the usual thing, we need a, an int to store the location of that uniform variable in. So we're going to set that to get uniform location and then we put in the name of that uniform just like always. Should be pretty used to this by now. Now we need a method to allow us to load up a value to that uniform variable. This is going to take in the boolean which will indicate whether we should or shouldn't use fake lighting and then we can use the load boolean method that we added uh, a long time ago and we'll load up that boolean to the use fake lighting uniform. Then in the entity renderer class we need to, to actually load up that boolean so we do that in the prepare texture model method by doing shader.load fake lighting variable texture dot is use fake lighting and that obviously hasn't worked because I haven't yet set any textures to use fake lighting uh, so we need to do that here grass dot get texture dot set use fake lighting and if we set that to true and now run that that should work and you can see here that all of the grass is now looking a bit more reasonable and all the grass has the same kind of lighting on it. So that is it for this week. Next week we're going to be adding fog to our game so that will be lovely. Uh, I've put a download link for all of the models and textures from this tutorial in the description of this video so you can use them if you want. Don't forget to check out yesterday's devlog video if you haven't already, link is on the screen now and links from my Facebook and Twitter pages are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have an awesome week, and I will see you all next time.